Welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here, Aldadia. We have with us Kirtan Chak, co-founder and CEO at SRE Wealth, joining in. You're watching The Financial Coach. Uh, today, we are going to actually discuss in detail as to, you know, I mean, we've been talking in the last couple of series as well about personal finance. Today, we are going to actually concentrate on index funds versus ETFs versus FOFs. What are all of these about? You know, what is the distinguishing factor and what are the pros and cons? Uh, welcome to the show, Kirtan, and a pleasure to speak to you and get insights from you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Pleasure. Uh, Kirtan, my first question coming to you is, uh, for all, you know, all the viewers' sake, if we can start with understanding the difference between investing in index funds, ETFs, and FOFs, and what are they? So, uh... Hiral, uh, unfortunately, I see a lot of investors uh, assuming that ETFs and index funds are different from mutual funds. They are not. Uh, all these three things that we are talking about, ETF, index, and FOF, they are all three mutual funds. So how are they different from the normal category of mutual funds that investors uh, typically are aware of? So let me start with helping you understand the very basics of what is an index fund. So index fund is a type of a mutual fund in which when you invest, that mutual fund is indirectly or directly giving you exposure to a particular index. So let's say if you are investing in a Nifty 50 index fund, ideally what you are doing is through the mutual fund, taking exposure to Nifty 50. So if Nifty 50 moves up by, let's say 10%, this fund is more or less expected to move up in the same time. Now the reason why I say more or less is because there is a small component of expense that is imbibed where the fund is also making some money giving you this opportunity to invest in in the index so more or less while i talk about index funds all i'm trying to say is that it's a mutual fund through which you can take exposure to any index in which you would want to invest uh, uh. That, can be, that can be nifty 50 that can be nifty next 50 that can be mid cap small cap any index or bank nifty, IT, there are these funds available which help you take exposure. They are no way different from how a normal mutual fund operates. Almost everything between a normal mutual fund that somebody understands and the index fund is almost the same, right? But ETF is slightly different. Now what happens is, let's say, let's say, uh, assume ETF to be like a stock, right? So uh, it is a mutual fund and I don't want people to get confused. It is a mutual fund through which you can take exposure to any index, right? Or you can take exposure to gold, right? Or you can take exposure to fixed income. The difference is unlike a normal mutual fund, which when you buy and sell, you will typically get the day end enemy. So let's say if you bought at, bought something at 10.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m., Right? It does not matter what the market was at 10.30. You typically get the closing price uh, value in the mutual fund. Right, That's how normal mutual funds operate. The only difference in ETFs is it trades like a stock. So while you buy it at 10.30, you will get the gold or the fixed income or the equity that you bought right at that price while the market is live. So you can actually buy and sell during live markets and you will get live prices. That's how it is different from what I explained to you with respect to an index fund. Almost everything else is the same, right? And the third, which we call as fund of funds. Now what happens is uh, there are uh, a couple of shortfalls of ETFs, right? Which we will discuss uh, slightly ahead. So there can be one reason where there there are some sh shortfalls of ETF. There is another reason that there are a lot of different kinds of funds which are not available in India, right? They are probably based out of the country. Right? Right. There are some funds in Hong Kong, some funds in the US. So there are different funds in which Indian investors probably directly cannot take exposure to. So what the Indian mutual fund industry does is they create a fund which is called fund of fund which then invest in that Hong Kong, China, or the US space fund. So ultimately, as an Indian investor, what you're doing is investing in the Indian fund, where the Indian fund is not managing your money. It's only a vehicle which allows you to invest in that Hong Kong fund or China fund or the US fund where you can't invest directly. 
so that is what you call as a fund of fund so uh, this is the primary difference uh, for the these right. three right. that we are talking about right so overall kirtan overall if you have to see or talk about the pros and cons what would they be of investing you know in index funds etfs and fofs so uh, look let me let me talk about uh, the pros first and let me club index and etf together because largely in the indian context etfs are also made on the index only largely right so look at it as index and etf to be almost the same right it is just that etf allows you to buy during live market hours and index does not allow you to now the reason why a lot of investors may find it interesting to invest in index and etf is because you know for a fact that there is hardly going to be an any under performance to the index now i'm sure uh, hiral you will agree that while we as investment advisors while do investing or most of us as investors while we are looking at doing investing there is one benchmark against which we try and compare whether we've been able to do good or bad and that benchmark is always probably let's say the index which is nifty or the mid cap or the small cap now while you invest on your own in direct equity or through active mutual funds there is a probability that you might not be able to beat the benchmark right what what this category solves as a problem is that if you invest in index or etfs there is hardly any possibility of you not being able able to beat the benchmark of course that also means that you will not be able to outperform the benchmark or underperform the benchmark your return is going to be same as the benchmark so anybody who does not want to get into too much of detailing of fund selection which fund manager is good which category of fund will do better which theme will work in the market and they simply want to do long term simple investing can look at passive investing through etfs and index investing right so that that in my opinion uh, is a major role that etf and index funds actually end up playing talking about fofs look fof is uh, one place where i feel that there are so many of these thematic investments that uh, uh, you don't get an opportunity to invest in uh, because it is not made available to you those themes can be made available through an fof so let me give you an example and this is no recommendation let's say china has fallen 40% from its peak now that we are currently talking indian markets are at all time high there may be some investor who probably feels that china is a value buy at this point in time but how many of us really know how to invest in the chinese market right there is too much a complication of onshore offshore hong kong thailand that's all taiwan china so ideally let's say if there is a fund sitting in the us or hong kong which is investing in china and then there is an indian fund which is making a cover or a fund of fund of that fund then what happens is you can invest in that indian fund and take exposure to china so there are so many of these themes in my opinion that we don't get access to where fof uh, plays a major role in my opinion right uh, second of course we will discuss slightly in more detail about this but there are some limitations of etfs right uh, which is why a lot of fund houses what they do in india is they make a fund of fund of an etf because as a retail investor if you are going to find it slightly difficult to invest in etfs which we will talk about then you might as well invest in the fund of fund to get exposure to that etf so this in my opinion is largely the reason why somebody should look at doing an etf index or an fof on the negative side uh, here there are two three uh, things that i feel are uh, negative let me start with fof first so the first con in my opinion for fof is the cost now why do i say so look there are two funds that you are indirectly investing in one is the indian fund and another is the original fund in where in which the money is supposed to go so while you are investing in the fof there is this cost of the original fund and then there is a the cost of this cover which is going to allow you to invest in that fund so cost of uh, fof is hmm. slightly higher in in that context okay right uh, while i talk about uh, index funds i don't see too much of uh, uh, negative uh, uh, or cons around in doing index investing the only probably 
can be that you will never ever be able to beat the benchmark your returns are always going to be going to be parallel to the benchmark but 9 out of 10 cases most investors would not bother about that so that's not a con in my opinion at least etf has a couple of problems in my opinion you know uh, the first problem uh, typically is that the demat is compulsory right now of course uh, we've seen this boom where a lot of us are opening demat accounts but there are so many of our investors who yet don't have a demat right so while in mutual funds you can invest without a demat etf particularly needs you to have a demat which is compulsory and also another problem with etf is unlike in index and fof where you can do your sips swps stps in etf by by uh, by the product manufacturers you cannot make an sip or an swp or an stp of course there are uh, uh, technology platforms which allow you to do that right using technology but it's not a it's not a feature given to you by the manufacturer so plain theory context you can't do an sip stp or an swp in an etf right uh, uh, one major disadvantage in my opinion of the etf is the bid ask spread now because it is listed on the exchange and we understood you can buy during live markets live prices right but etfs don't have a lot of liquidity in the indian context and because there is not a lot of liquidity there is always going to be a bid ask spread so you might feel that the ideal value let's say nifty is trading today at 18300 uh, that we are talking today right but if you want to buy an uh, uh, nifty etf from the index because there is not a lot of liquidity you might get it 30 rupees expensive so you might get it at 18330 so that is a cost um, in etf if at all you can't really buy it and it can work both sides buying as well as selling right so so this in my opinion are the problems with the etf uh, and fof if i can add one more in index which i forgot look because largely index and etf are are looked at the same thing right it's taking exposure to the index index funds are slightly expensive than etf so the most expensive are fof right then it is index and then it is etf so let's say if i want to take exposure to nifty right so i can get a nifty etf at 5 paise or 10 paise expense ratio but if i go through a nifty uh, index fund i might have to pay a 50 paise 60 paise so that's one small disadvantage of index that it's slightly costlier than the etf product. right so so kirtan with all of this now if a new investor is coming in what should be the starting point for them and what should the allocation look like between the three so uh, here i look in my opinion first uh, now what should be the starting point if i'm a new investor the first thing that i really want new investors to understand is you know do not try and invest in products that you don't understand uh, the the thumb rule is very simple the, the more the complex the product is it is actually not meant for you right if you just follow this simple philosophy i think you will uh, do uh, investing right 9 out of 10 times right uh, now look there are in the indian context if i'm not wrong with the number there are 1545 schemes available wow mutual funds to invest now you want to invest in four five schemes right now it's going to be a big challenge for you to be able to figure out how do you select these four five out of the 1545 schemes available in the market right now you might say how does it matter if i want to buy a small cap i rather buy small cap fund or any amc available in the market it's not as simple let me give you a stat so that i can emphasize on the point that i'm trying to tell you if you look at the last three year numbers right on the small cap space the best performing small cap fund has generated an average return of 34% cagr 3 years the worst cap small cap fund worst case small cap fund has generated 12% now you might think both are small caps right offered by different amcs but the difference uh, in the performance is a staggering 22% right so uh, so if you if you really don't have the skill set to figure out which fund manager uh, should you really opt for then in my opinion your starting point should always be passive investing uh, take uh, go ahead start investing in an index right and that's the best way to go about doing it but of course 
as in when you graduate as an investor you start understanding uh, how to look at fund managers and fund performances and portfolios or probably if you have an advisor to guide you in the right direction only then look at active that is what i would suggest new people coming in in mm-hmm. in this kind of right so kirtan overall what should be the time horizon be and what are the important factors to consider lastly while investing in the index etf and fof okay so uh, i think look first uh, while i am talking about uh, either of these uh, etfs index or fof please understand there can be a gold based product there can be a fixed income based product or there can be an equity based product now equity is what generally people would want to invest right. because uh, fixed income is not that popular yet in terms of passive investing <laughs> while we are talking about equity in hey, sandhya ji the videos will be ready videos will be ready to sorry you are not on kirtan i can hear you Hiral, you are on mute. I don't. There was another video audio playing from somewhere. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Now I don't know where did I stop and where do I start from. Yeah, I think you'll have to just repeat it again. Uh, sure. So, what was the question? I forgot. Sorry. Ha. Huh. Uh, what is the allocation between equity, fixed income? Uh, so uh hiral actually in my opinion look uh, there can be uh, etf index or an fof based on gold there can be any of these three products based on fixed income and then there can be any of these product based on equity now because in the indian context uh, passive passive investing in uh, passive investing in fixed income is not that uh, that hugely popular let me uh, focus more on the equity side of it right now uh, like i was telling you there are 1545 different schemes available today uh, hiral uh, in terms of selection where you can invest uh, or select four five funds that you really want to invest in now uh, to a lot of investors uh, this may sound very simple that if i have to invest in four five different scheme how is it too difficult let me let me pick any small cap or any large cap mm-hmm. fund that i want to invest in any of these uh, amcs but if you get your fund selection or scheme selection process wrong the the cost is very huge so to give you a data point let's say if you look at the last 3 years of performance of small cap funds right there are some 13 14 uh, major funds with at least 3 years 5 years of track record the best performing small cap fund cagr over the last 3 years era has been 34% but the worst performing small cap fund cagr has been roughly 12% now you might feel that they are both small cap funds offered by just two different amcs but the difference in their performance is a staggering 22% right so in my opinion uh, if you are if you are an investor who understands how to pick funds or you are guided by an experienced advisor then you should go at go at picking those four or five out of the available 1500 in the market but if you are a new investor with no help from anybody you don't understand a lot of it yourself i think you can simply go ahead and stick to investing in in index funds i think that's the best way as a as a new entrant in the market you should do investing now how much of your uh, what should you keep in mind while you are investing in either of these three products a couple of very quick takeaways here in my opinion Uh, look we said etf and index largely looks the same so how do you decide should you Correct. do index or should you do etf mm-hmm. so uh, my my simple data point here is that if you are going to invest anything less than 50 lakhs okay you go ahead and do index investing if you are going to invest more than 50 lakhs you go ahead and do etf now i'll tell you the logic why right most of these etfs are that are available in the market we said that the bigger problem is the bid ask spread right but if you are if you invest more than 50 lakhs of your investment then you you can actually get the live market price by going to the amc and buying it from the amc directly you might not have to buy it from the stock exchange 
so that eradicates the problem of bid ask spread that you would generally have while you buy and sell ETFs. But the minimum ticket size for you to go to the AMC and buy it is 50, 50 lakhs. So if you have more than 50 lakhs to invest, you should do ETF because the cost is much lower. But if your investment is less than 50 lakhs, I would sincerely suggest you to stick to, stick to index funds. And uh, because we are talking about equity largely, I don't think anybody should come to investing in ETFs, index, or even FOFs, assuming to make any quick bucks. Mm -hmm. the three to five years of investment horizon is the, is the minimum that you would require mm -hmm. to take uh, equity exposure, in my opinion. Absolutely. And I think you know these are great insights because not a lot of people are actually aware about index investing, ETFs, FOFs, and that's something is always a gray area for them. But thank you, Ketan, so much for clarifying all of this for us, giving us more insights. And hoping to speak to you soon again to do our next series on the same way. We will go in depth, maybe talk about a lot of funds which are available as well to get a better understanding. Kiral, thank you so much for inviting. Thank you. Thank you, Kirtan, so much. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for in-depth interviews of India Inc. and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates.